What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. So gaming has probably become the biggest sport in the world now. Millions of people are playing games every single day and with that a lot of gamers want to be able to play competitively or even make it their job, just like most other athletes. But going pro you are going to need some equipment that's going to help you get an edge above your opponent. One of the most important equipment you're going to need is a high refresh rate monitor. That's where the ASUS VG248QE comes in. Retailing for 4,400 Rand on Rebeltech here in South Africa or $268 on Amazon, you are going to get a fully fledged 144Hz gaming monitor for an extremely low price. But with that being said, I'll let's get into the full review right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and stock all the major brands like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. They also have the new Ryzen Threadrippers in store and when you purchase any selected ASUS ROG monitors, you will get a copy of PUBG for free. So check out the link in the video description to go visit Rebel Tech. Now, just to keep things simple, I am going to call the ASUS VG248QE the 248, just because otherwise it's going to be too long. But first up, let's take a look at the screen itself. The 248 is a 24 inch Full HD TN 144Hz gaming monitor. Now, because it's a TN panel, you won't get the best precise color accuracy but it is definitely good enough for gaming and basic production work. The 24.8 has a contrast ratio of 80 million to 1, 16.7 million displayable colors, 1 millisecond gray to gray response, and then a 93.1% sRGB color accuracy. So in plain English, this is going to be a great monitor for gaming. Looking at the monitor, you will notice that it does have quite a thick bezel but this is common for most gaming monitors at this price if you want something that has a thinner bezel you can look at the asus rog pg 258q that also has a 240 hertz refresh rate so you can check that out now another common problem with tn panels is that they do have weak viewing angles but I found that the 24-8 wasn't really that bad. You do get a little discoloration of viewing from the sides, but you can still see everything on the screen. Only when looking from the bottom upwards do you see that the screen gets grey and can't really see what's being displayed. But looking from the top downwards, you can still see everything just like the sides. The screen also features anti-glare, so if you sit in front or next to a window, you won't have that light shining on the screen and ruining your experience. But keep in mind that anti-glare does still reflect light if you shine it close or directly onto the monitor. As for backlight bleed, I'm glad to see that the 24 has only a little backlight bleed close to the sides, but nothing that you would really notice immediately. Next, let's check out the screen buttons and menu, which is located at the bottom right corner. Firstly, to the far right, you have your screen power button, which when on, it will be illuminated blue. Next to that, you have your input selection button, which lets you change between HDMI, DVI-D and DisplayPort. Next to that, you get the brightness or menu up button. I left my brightness on 75% because more than that, it was just way too bright for me. But next to that, you get the full menu button that lets you adjust all the basic settings you would get on most monitors and a few nice extra ones like the blue light filter adjustment. Next to the menu, you get the game plus menu or menu down button. Game Plus is a feature ASUS builds into their gaming monitors that allows you to add a crosshair or a timer on the screen. Now this won't be for everybody, but I did use it a bit in CSGO and found it to be pretty decent. But I know a lot of people won't like it, but this is an additional feature which is always nice to have. Then the last button allows you to cycle through the preset modes set by ASUS. 
Now, with most monitors, you want to be able to adjust the monitor to what feels best for you. Luckily, with the 24-8, you do have a few adjustments you can do. You're able to adjust the stand up or down by 110 millimeters, swivel left or right by 45 degrees, tilt up or down by minus 5 to 15 degrees. Then you're also able to pivot the screen by 90 degrees for a portrait view. But with the pivot, you have to adjust the height to its max first and also tilt the screen to 15 degrees. Otherwise, the corner of the screen is going to bump into the base plate. Speaking of the base plate, you do have a nice round basic design. Not everybody wants a flashy three-legged stand like the ROG monitors. They just want a basic stand that will fit on their desk. And we all know cable management can be a pain, but luckily the 24A does help out a bit with that. At the back of the stand, you get a cable management raceway that allows you to neatly hide all the monitor's cables. Something like this is always handy to have, even though you won't necessarily use it. But now, something I'm not too crazy about is the 3D Vision logo on the base. I know it supports 3D Vision, but I don't really want to see it every time I look it down. I would have preferred just a nice clean black base instead. Taking a look at the back I.O., you have a few different display inputs to choose from. You have HDMI, DVI-D, and DisplayPort. You do get a DVI-D cable with the monitor, but I would recommend that you use a DisplayPort cable instead. But alongside the display inputs, you get a 3.5mm audio input, and then also a 3.5mm headphone output, so you can connect your favorite headphones straight into the monitor. Then to power the 24-8, you have a standard 3-pin kettle plug connection. And then lastly, you have a Kensington lock to prevent somebody from stealing your monitor at a LAN, which unfortunately does happen. As for speakers, the 24-8 does feature two 2-watt two stereo speakers, but I would not really recommend them. They're not horrible, but you would get a lot better sound from dedicated external speakers. But here's a quick audio test for you to decide. Now I have to say this is my first time using a high refresh rate monitor. A lot of people say you can't see more than 60 Hz, but honestly I could see the difference immediately. Switching between my normal 60 Hz TV and the 24-8 just in the desktop, I could already see the difference. The mouse cursor on the 24-8 looks so much smoother. But now this is a gaming monitor, so how did it perform in games? And keep in mind this is my first time gaming with a 144 Hz monitor. And straight away I can already say that it's amazing. Fast paced games like CSGO look so much smoother. It's kind of hard to explain exactly how it feels, but you're just able to react a tiny bit faster. But in a game like CSGO, that tiny bit faster is really going to help. But now, if you're not really going to play competitive, the high refresh rate will be nice, but you're not really going to use it then I would rather say go spend your money on a bigger monitor or a monitor with an IPS panel. That would probably work a lot better for you. But if you are going to play competitive, you should definitely get a 144Hz monitor like the 24.8. It's just going to give you that split second faster reaction time, which could mean losing or winning a match. And that's it for my review of the ASUS VG248QE 144Hz gaming monitor. So like I said, this was my first high refresh rate monitor that I have used. And literally, like I said, a lot of people don't think you can see past 60Hz, but you can definitely and i do have a 240 hertz monitor coming up next as well so i'm gonna see what's the difference between 144 hertz and 240 hertz so i'm pretty excited to try that one out as well 
But like I said in the beginning, if you are looking to purchase the 24-8, you can follow the links in the video description where you can buy it on Rebel Tech if you live in South Africa or Amazon if you live overseas. Also, I don't know if you guys saw it, I am wearing some custom We Do Tech t-shirts. So a lot of you guys have been asking for the t-shirts, so it's finally here, so I do have a few. So currently I only have two colors, a white one and a black one. With the black one, it's just uh, everything is the opposite color, so it's pretty simple. But yeah, if you are looking to purchase one of these two for yourself, you can just hit me up by email. I'll leave my email link in the description as well if you want to get one. Uh, they are they are selling for 150 rand or 13 dollars. So that's without shipping. Unfortunately, shipping is going to be a bit more, uh, especially if you want if you live overseas and you want me to uh, ship you one. It's going to be a bit more. But anyway, if like I said, if you want to get uh, get yourself one, you can just use my email link in the description and just hit me up and we shall arrange for everything. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, comment, comment like always. Also, please go check out my vlogging channel we do stuff uh, I'm trying to post there every day also you can check out my gaming channel we do gaming I haven't really posted the video I am planning to I just need to get a few stuff sorted out for we do tech and then I'm gonna start gaming with you guys so yeah you can just check out we do stuff and we do gaming as well but anyway that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys and I'll check you guys next time cheers guys